I, I was not too long ago talking to someone about saturated fats and how, you know, here in the U.S., around the 70s, we like really the government started demonizing the saturated fats and the food industry started. De and and just as like one one side effect of that has been just since then, we've seen such a huge increase in Alzheimer's specifically in cognitive disorders in humans when we have reduced significantly the saturated fats that we have in our diets and so that also affects our pets obviously but um i think that's kind of a good starting point to to talk about the benefits of these these fatty acids in the coconut oil both internally and, and externally <laughs> yeah yeah um you're you're right coconut oil is a saturated fat and unfortunately, everybody, if you, you Google fats, everybody's afraid of saturated fats. It's being, we've been brainwashed thinking that saturated fats are bad for you. I've heard many people say that, and that's why I stay away from coconut oil. What they don't realize is there are different kinds of saturated fats. There's the long chain fats and the medium chain fats, which everybody says. And all it is, is all fats are uh, carbon atoms, and it, they, they classify them by their lengths based on the number of carbon atoms they have. So medium chain fat is anywhere from um, 6 to 12, and long chain fat would be 18 up to 22 or 24. So it makes a difference because it, they're metabolized very different. Well, the long chain fats are the saturated fats that doctors are, that warn you about, butter, um, meat, you know, beef, animal fat, and butter is a long chain saturated fat. But coconut oil is a medium chain saturated yeah, fat. Yeah. And mm -hmm. it's the same fats found in mother's milk. So mm -hmm. if you know why babies and, you know, uh, puppies and kittens drink mother's milk, it's because they're building a healthier immune system and they're getting that from the medium chain fats found in mother's milk. So that's why it's also very beneficial. Um, so saturated fats are, are, are one of the easiest to metabolize. Uh, they're very low stress on the body to break down. Um, they're converted to energy ketones very easily, which is one of the cleanest, simplest form of fuel for the body. It's yeah. easier to convert, say, a medium chain fat to cellular energy than, say, carbohydrates, which is why it's so healthy for animals with cognitive disorders because it feeds cellular brain cells. We all know about ketones going to the brain or um, animals with diabetes. When they have a hard time, they have insulin issues because they can't convert um, carbs to sh sugar and they can't break down the sugar into energy. This yeah. is why coconut oil is so healthy and so helpful for so many different types of animals and different reasons. Yeah. And it's healthy for animals with pancreatitis because coconut oil being a medium chain fat, you don't need um, dietary, you don't need lipase or bile acids, any of those digestive enzymes to digest coconut oil. Um, there's no chylomicron activity where it transports the fat into your bloodstream and it gets into your arteries. None of that happens. What happens is as soon as you consume coconut oil, it the um, the medium chain fats gets uh, transported directly to your liver through a portal vein. And in your liver, it gets metabolized and converted to ketones. And that's right. what actually fuels the cells in your body. So it totally bypasses all the, the need for pancreatic enzymes or bile acids, which is why animals with pancreatitis can actually have um, coconut oil. Nice. Yeah. I have yeah. A question related to that. That was one of the biggest questions I had coming into today's session, because again, going to the consumers and the pet parents that we all three talk to um, repeatedly, we get feedback from them, from their veterinarians that they cannot, they have to have a low fat diet and they have zero tolerance for fat period. And, you know, the challenge, as we know in, in the industry, is that the lack of nutrition that a traditional veterinarian, you know, receives when they are a student. So unless they are doing this on their own, it's, um, it's just inadequate. So yeah. <laughs> when <That's> talking <laughs> to, <laughs> sadly, it is true. Um, and when talking to their veterinarian, um, 
what are some recommendations from you guys that, you know, with your science background, you know, not that it is our job to convince our veterinarian to give us the approval and the thumbs up, you know, to add something to our pet's diet, because that is our job. That's our right. It's our responsibility to make the best decisions for our pets. And, um, you know, we, again, all, all of us here on this, you know, podcast are proponents for um, health and nutrition through via, via nutrition. So it, it's a challenge. And what would you tell our listeners as far as talking to their, or, or, you know, not even maybe not talking to their vet. Maybe it's just that they want to make that best decision. Right. You know, we have dogs who have seizures. We have dogs who have diabetes, kidney disease, and they all come in and they want below 10% fat. Yeah. Well, first of all, I would tell them that not all fats are the same. And number one, number two, um, a lot of veterinarians don't know what coconut oil is. You know what's really interesting is I was in a conventional veterinarian's office one time, and he pulled out the Merck Medical Veterinary Manual <laughs> to yes. show me something because he was a very good vet in the sense that he would educate me and show me drawings, et cetera, right? Mm -hmm. Then I remembered looking through the manual and flipping to the pancreatitis section. And then the, this veterinary manual, it explained and it said, medium chain triglycerides are that fine. They are fine to give with animals, wow. but it did not say coconut oil. Wow. So in this manual, it said medium chain triglycerides. But, and then I, I chuckled to myself knowing that what that was. So a lot of these conventional veterinarians, they don't know what that is. They mm -hmm. think it's a different type of fancy yeah. triglyceride. They don't know that's coconut oil. So, so they might give some sort of like um, pharmaceutical type supplement that says on the label medium, medium chain triglycerides, triglycerides, but they don't know exactly where it came from. I actually yeah. had, yeah. so we've had animals her whole life. She had a cat with idiopathic pancreatitis. I mean, I've had um, a, a dog, a Yorkie with PLE, protein losing enteropathy. Both conditions, you need very low fat. And so we had vets, you know, we go to a vet specialty clinic with internal medicine. Mm -hmm. Vets are very knowledgeable, but they're also mm -hmm. conventional. So they said, you have to be very low in fat, guard against fat, blah, blah, blah. So um, there, one of the vets said, well, here's a very special, of course, um, oil that you can buy from me. And it has lots of medium chain triglycerides in it. So I said, okay, great. I'll buy it. You know, I look at it. It's a, it's a special kind of fish oil. So fish oil is not a medium chain fat, but in her brain, she thought it was. And it was just a very expensive, you know, prescription fish oil, fish oil yeah. that I got. And then, I mean, it was okay. But um, so it just showed me that didn't, they did not understand what a medium chain fat was. So for mm -hmm. all our animals that had these issues, well, pancreatitis that your cat had and my family issues, we, yeah. uh, we continued to give coconut oil and they thrived on it. So, mm -hmm. you know, it came to a point where... um. We don't even tell them <laughs> we're giving them coconut oil because they'll be like, well, what? You're yeah. going to kill your dog? But, you know, quite frankly, I have. But yeah, for, especially for, when you go back and they say, you're, oh, you, your, your cat looks fantastic. Doing well. Continue doing what you're doing. Well, you know what? Guess yeah. what? I've been yeah. giving them, you know, coconut oil and they're like, what? Yeah. You know? But by then they're, they're willing to listen. And if you tell them that they are medium chain triglycerides, as it says under a manual, then I think they're a little bit more open to it. But I think it's just a really a lack of education in their part. Like you said, they don't get a lot of nutrition. Mm -hmm. But my mm -hmm. main thing for these people that's, that say their vet recommends a super low fat diet, fat is an extremely functional macronutrient. You cannot yeah. live without fat. I don't care no. what kind of disease you have. You will die mm -hmm. if you live on a super low zero fat diet, which first of all, it's virtually impossible to do. But secondly, yep. your body will not, you won't survive. You just won't thrive because you need fats. Our brain is like, yeah, you need your fat brain. to absorb yeah. nutrients, fat soluble nutrients, first of all, mm -hmm. you know, for one thing. Mm -hmm. And then the, you will just stress the body out metabolically because they're not getting the right type of protection, um, the simplest form of energy. You, you, fat is a necessary m macronutrient. So, right. And, and fat is converted to cholesterol. 
So good cholesterol. Animals good. are very, very high in good cholesterol, HDL. HDL. So for all of us, you know, everybody's like, eat a low cholesterol diet, cut out fat, blah, blah, blah. We need cholesterol. Our, our bodies convert cholesterol. fat to good cholesterol. And we need that for... um for just the process well, of all the hormones yes. in our bodies and are um, produced coconut cholesterol. oil is actually converts to good cholesterol that's the and other thing about cholesterol. about yeah yes then the other thing too about animals that people don't realize animals can actually tolerate so much more fat than humans can so um the the diet that they eat with a high the amount of fat they tolerate if humans ate the kind of saturated fat from meat or beef that animals can consume we might get effects of of um you know it yeah, might affect our, our blood heart, turn to our sludge. Our blood would turn to sludge, <laughs> basically, with with the amount of fat that animals can, can handle, can handle, and, sh and should be able to handle. Yeah. Um. There's this wildlife biologist, Dr. Mark Norris. I don't know if you've heard of them, of him. He um coined the terms biologically appropriate species, species appropriate food. He was the one who coined that term because what he did, he was a wildlife biologist. So he had the study where he studied both domesticated dogs and wild dogs. Um, he had um, left um, food, fat, foods that were fat, carbs, and protein and let the animals forage on their own and just to see what they would eat. And he noticed both in the domesticated and the wild dogs, they would first gorge on fat. That was wow. the first thing they did. They gorged on fat. And then after getting their fill of their fat, then they would gorge on meat, protein, second, and then carbs last. So that feeds their brain and just feeds their system. And he was, that's the way fats are supposedly, I mean, animals are supposed to eat. So mm -hmm. that's the other thing I would tell the customer. So this fear of fat is really, I think it's... Uh, you yeah. have to give the right fats, of course. Don't go frying bacon and, you know, yeah. well, <laughs> that's the other turkey. thing, too. Cooked fats is highly uh, oxidized. No, no, yeah. And oxidized. Oxidized, yeah. oxidized fats are, are toxic, so we don't recommend giving cooked fat. Yeah, and I think it's also important to to know, like, so we can, we are, we're only getting calories from three places, protein, fat, and carbs, mm -hmm. right? And so yeah. if we're telling people that they have to remove fat or as much fat as possible from the diet, we're looking at, I mean, fat is is close to a two to one ratio of calories to protein. So it takes a lot more protein mm -hmm. to make up the caloric difference. So a lot of these diets are relying really heavily on cheap carbohydrate fillers. Mm -hmm. And that is just as difficult for an, a dog or a cat's pancreas to digest. I mean, they are still having to produce tons of granted different, but still digestive enzymes to break down the attempt to break down those carbohydrates. And so it's it, it really isn't i mean none of it's ideal and we probably got there we probably got to pancreatitis because of the high carbohydrate yeah, content yeah. in the food coupled with oxidized fats that the body yep. is trying to break down over yep. an extended period of time and that's mm -hmm. really where i'm on my soapbox now 